Jones and welcome to Aberhol Junction and today I show you how I wire up my PL1005 micro switches from Pico and I also give you a couple of examples of how they can be used. I buy mine in a pack like this where it comes with a motor and the micro switch underneath um, as it's cheaper and I also buy six of those together, buy them in bulk and it's also cheaper than buying them separately. Okay, so this is an opportune time for me to do this video as number one, it's a very frequently asked question. And number two, I'm in the process of installing these two point motors here on my big hill, which runs from my um, bridge up to my coal mine, which will be done off there to the right. Okay, this is the fourth um, video in my series. If you wanna see the rest of the videos, take a look up in that card up there and you'll see the older videos where I cover the install and the electrical installation for the motor themselves. I've got one more video to come and that'll cover the tips and tricks that I've had, that I've experienced, that I've learned in about the year and a half I've had of um, actually operating these things. So without any further ado, let's get straight into it. And this is a really simple method, which I'm sure you can all follow. So sit back for a quick five minute video, get a cup of tea, um, and let's get these things wired up and I'll show you how I do it. Cheers now. Okay, so what you'll need to wire them up is this handy wiring loom here, which contains two um, sets of cables, sets of wires. This is the PL34 from Pico. This is about six quid, I think. And as I said, that's enough for two um, micro switches. You also then, within the pack, you get a wiring diagram, um, which is this thing here. And if you're not familiar with electrical wiring diagrams, they can be a bit scary, but trust me, when I show you how easy this thing goes together, you'll see it's doddle. Um, if you don't want to go down the soldering option, um, you'll also need some connectors, um, either the spline ones, which um, ply are on, or I use these Wago connectors. There's several examples. Um, they're probably, I don't know, about 10 pence a piece. So a relatively cheap way of doing it, maybe 20 pence a piece. Okay, so that's all you need. Um, and then I'll show you how I connect this up and how I connect it to, in what I do is to change the polarity on the frogs on my, uh, um, my points. So I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so in your pack, your PL34, you've got two reds, two blacks, and two greens. Um, as I said, that's enough to do two um, micro switches. So each of the wires is pre-soldered or pre-crimped with a spade connector. Hopefully you can see that on there. Um, and then these terminals then on the micro switch which hopefully you can also see. You'll see there's two sets, two banks of three. So there's two outputs you can have from this. So one could feed your frog polarities, for example, and one could feed a mimic board. Um, so you can get all that off the one, the one switch. And then it's just a case of, for the red and the black connectors, you'll note in between, I'm just consistent. I, I don't actually think it makes any difference, but you'll note that there's a short gap and a longer gap. And what I do on my layout is I'm consistent. I do red on the on the outer pin on the short side, then go for the black one. These spade connectors are a bit tricky to get on. Once you've put them on and off once or twice, they actually get a bit loose. So you might want to ply them up afterwards. And the final one to go on then is the green, which is going to the outside. And that's it. It's as simple as that. Um, what did that take? One minute 30. Um, and that's a faffing around with filming as well. You might want to just tape off that in case it spuriously touches anything else on your layout. I have had that happen. So I just, um, not cable tight, sorry. Um, insulate and tape that off just in, to ensure it doesn't touch anything else. So that's it. That's one of the feeds done. Um, red, black, green. You might find, and I did find actually on the most recent one of these I've put in, um, which is this point here, 
um when the logos were coming up to it it was actually tripping on my Hornby select down there so what i had to do was just flip the red and the black outputs um just with the wago connectors not with the spade connectors and that uh, fixed the problem so yeah very easy to do um i will now show you it changing the polarity and you can see one of its uh, potential uses two minutes 30. okay so for this example i'm going to use a uh what's that medium radius uh, left hand electrofrog point which i've modified as per the standard pico instructions um there's some really good examples on Dean Park, um, Everard Junction, Chadwick also do a good video. So I'm not going to show you how to do that modification, but it's fairly straightforward. It needs a little bit of soldering, um, but even my very rudimentary skills can butcher a good enough job. Um, you essentially cut a couple of wires that are there. You solder across these two here in the fairly obvious place where you've got a big gap and you attach a frog wire which then allows that to be connected to the micro switch and hence can be changed what i'm going to use this little pack for is in these really cool buffer stops which come come with their own light i'll put a light on each side of this and you can see as the micro switch changes how the polarity um, of the frog changes and hence which side of the um, point is charged electrically charged okay so let's get that set up right now okay so for the purpose of this simple demonstration i've turned the lights down low and hopefully you can see that that one's red and that one's off that one's on that one's off i've bought up a feed from my hornby select both for the red side which is powering the micro switch and the um modified point um, and then I've also, in addition to that, got the black wire doing exactly the same. And then the feed from the green wire, the end terminal, the longer, so the two short and then the long one, that one is going off to my frog. And for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm not going to have the, um, the point motor do the switching. I'm going to do the switching myself. So you can imagine if the point motor lever was in there, it will be switching that slider back and forth. And as if by magic, you can see. So unlike the olden days where, you know, the layout I had as a kid, for example, the, the levers at the bottom of the point did all the work. It's now irrelevant. You can see the actual powering of this frog is all done by the micro switch. So yeah, you have to get it right. <laughs> And there we go, that's it folks. So these spade terminals from Pico, £2.50 per set, pretty much. Um, no soldering required. Track feed for your power, both to your modified point um, and also to your micro switch. So just a red and a black for the power and then a green for whatever you're taking that to. Be that a mimic board or in this case, just changing the polarity on my frogs. Um, hopefully you got something out of this folks. Um, this, this has been my most asked question. I think at least five people have asked it. <laughs> so for me, that's a lot of people. Um, if you like this video, um, I do one of these every couple of months. Um, yeah, including layout updates and, and what have you. So thanks for coming and um, I'll see you next time at Arbor Holt Junction where there might be a bit of an update to my layout, my track plan. So watch this space. Um, and yeah, keep an eye out for the fifth video, which will give you tips and tricks, including how to do Pico twist locks when you've got an incline. It's a lot of fun. Cheers, folks. I hope that was uh, useful for some of you. Thanks for coming, folks. See you next time at Abba Holt Junction.